Thank you for checking out this No Spoilers movie review for Beelzebub, which is available currently when I'm recording this on the Shutter streaming service for horror movies and shows. So you know where you can get it if you're seeing this when I put it out. Uh, those cycle off every now and then, but this one shouldn't cycle off. It should stick around because it is in a uh, Shutter original, which I'm kind of confused about um, because IMDb says this is a 2017 film which would lead me to believe that it was a film that was done and then picked up by Shudder. And then I feel like those are usually put as Shudder exclusives versus originals being where they're like, oh, here's money, let's let's do this film, and then it's done for Shudder specifically. So uh, on IMDb it's like 2017, and on Shudder it says 2019, which they just put it on there recently. So I don't know what the disconnect is, I'm not quite sure, but since it is a Shudder original, it should stay on the streaming service. Um, real quick, I, I did want to say <clears throat> a few things, two things. Uh, the first thing is I apologize for my voice. I am fighting something at the moment. So, uh, it also might kind of affect my energy level. So usually I'm more animated, more energetic on these reviews. So I apologize for that, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, the other thing I need to throw out there is a, a real big disclaimer with this review. And that's that I am not a big fan of certain things in film. Uh, and there are two things in this particular film that I don't like overall. So that may very much uh, impact my review of the film. So I'm just throwing that out ahead of time, and I'll kind of talk about that a little bit more later. Um, this film was directed and written by Emilio Portez. Uh, it's a film, it says on Shudder that's in English, but it's kind of a mix. I'd say it's more in Spanish than it is in English, at least in the first half, and then I feel like that kind of switches more towards the end, it becomes more in English and, and less in Spanish in the second half. So it, it's a mix, uh, so you can't go off of what it says on Shudder. I think they just kind of pick a language. I, don't, I haven't ever seen them put one on that says like English slash Spanish, so they had to pick one. So just know that going into it. So there are some subtitles. I know there's some people out there who are just like, I can't do subtitles, I just can't do it. Um, I don't understand that only if uh, I understand it if it gives people migraine headaches because I know there are people who when they're trying to read on the screen it really gives them headaches so I understand that but other than that I don't get it I think it's just like I don't like it which you're missing out on good film if that's the situation but you know uh, this film stars Tobin Bell. He's the only actual big name in this film. And I gotta be honest, he's the best part about this. He does a very good job. Um, excellent work. For the most part, the acting is fine. It's solid enough. The writing is okay. The There's some moments, though, especially earlier on in the film, where the dialogue is a little bit weird. It kind of doesn't feel realistic. Uh, p people say some things to each other and I'm just like, nobody would ever say that or that just sounds weird or it's, I don't know. So so the dialogue's a little iffy. So uh, I kind of wonder if the solid acting could have been even better acting if the dialogue was written better. But who knows? Uh, you'll never know those types of things. It's just too hard to tell. Okay, so... Early on in this film, it goes straight for the jugular with doing some pretty horrific stuff. It's pretty gory. It's pretty intense. And because of the subject of that, what's actually going on in, in the very first scene before the title card, uh, it may turn a lot of people off. I wouldn't be surprised if there are people who watch that scene before the title and are just like, nope, I'm not doing it. Because there there's something that's a big trigger. And it continues, at least for the first... Eh, like quarter to one third of the film and probably more like a quarter of the film there's more of that type of thing going on in it and and i know this is a very big trigger with people and horror films this particular thing so i'm relatively okay with it i will say that the way it was done was very tense it was very intense it was horrific it was scary so i mean they did a good job carrying that out but i just know there's some people are going to see it and be like nope and just turn it off. So, can't blame you. You know, everyone's got their their things. Um, so this actually, okay. So now I'm going to get to the things I was talking about with my disclaimer in the beginning uh, that are going to kind of sway me. Now, I know I say I do a no spoilers, but uh, it's spoilers. I do mini spoilers to the extent that whatever is in the synopsis, because that's just available without anyone watching the film. Um, 
So this is heavily reliant on people's fears of demons and 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 the devil, basically. Which, to be honestly, I picked out this shirt before I even decided to watch the movie today. So it's actually kind of this funny coincidence that I happen to wear this Devil's Milk Barley Wine shirt. Uh, really good beer, by the way. So, um, so yeah, so it relies heavily on on religious uh, topics. So it's about you know demonic stuff and the devil. Um, and that's just not, it's not, it, it's one of the subgenres of horror that I really don't like. And one of the big reasons is I'm not a religious person at all. So that type of stuff doesn't mean much to me. And it, it certainly isn't scary to me. But I do know a lot of people who are very much into religion. And for that reason, these type, this subgenre of horror is particularly scary and horrific to them because they believe this stuff is actually like can happen in real life. So, and I could see through that lens when people come at it from that perspective, yeah, that would make this stuff very, very scary because to them it's like, this could happen, this is crazy. So, like, it's not for me, but I get it when people actually legitimately, le legitimately sorry, like this subgenre or are, are scared by this subgenre. I am not, it's not a thing that, that I really enjoy, so... Um, the other thing that's in this that I really don't like in, in life in general actually is ghost hunting. I feel like it also goes hand in hand with the whole religion thing. I don't believe in ghosts or anything like that. And I think that ghost hunting things are bunk in my opinion, you know, just my personal opinion. I know a lot of people would believe in it. Um, and I, I just don't, I don't like the ghost hunting shows. There's a ghost hunting aspect that comes, comes into this film and I don't like those things. I think I just don't like them. They're just not for me. It's not my thing. But, like I said, you know, there are probably some people out there who have already seen this film or will watch this film who are just like, that works really well for me. I love it. And that's great because film is experienced differently for everyone. So go for it. Um, so it's interesting because there, there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of things at play in this film from a societal perspective. And that's one thing that horror in particular does extremely well as a genre in general and this one kind of plays to the fears of, well, it, it's a movie that takes place kind of on the border of the United States and Mexico. So it's interesting that it, it has these fears. So it has like, it. sorry, I'm getting a little bit lost. It plays on a fear particular to Mexican society and one particular to United States society and then one that's shared. So the one that's shared is what I talked about with the religious stuff with the with the devil and and demonic things. So that's the shared one. The one Mexico specific, it plays on the fear of drug cartels and cartel violence. Now on the United States side, it plays to the fear of mass shootings, which you know both of these things are very very topical right now. There's been you know terrible uh, cartel violence in Mexico for quite some time. That is a legitimate fear. There have been terrible mass shootings going on in the United States for some time. That is a legitimate fear. So I found it very interesting that they kind of took the individual fears and then one common shared fear. Um, it was just kind of a cool structure, in my opinion, for the film. And I, and I like that aspect of it. Um, <laughs> there is like a little thing in this film that I was kind of like, really? <laughs> uh, where some of the characters believed that they could they could kind of tell people oh this person went went crazy or was violent or was a terrible person because they smoked marijuana and i'm just like uh, i mean go go with something more believable like i don't know crack heroin meth i don't know something like that that it's more believable that stuff, stuff can make people aggressive when, when they're just like ah this person had marijuana when they did this violent thing Nobody believes that, man. It's absurd. So it was. it's a really small thing, but to me, I was just like, what? What is going on here? Uh, it just shows, like, being out of touch. Um, oh, like I already said, the dialogue is a little iffy at times. Uh, but I, I do think that the dialogue is much better towards the end. Maybe I said that already. I'm sorry if I did. Um, the film combine. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, sorry. I'm reading from my notes. I already covered that. The film combining the two things I don't really like. Apologies. So they have um, a decent amount of CGI in this film, and I feel like they did a pretty good job with the CGI. And one of the things is they kind of knew their limits with it. And this is one of the things that 
really, really helps with independent film when you kind of know the limits of what you can do. And with their CGI, they really knew that. So there are times where they put a little bit extra into the CGI because it was more lit and they did a, a pretty good job with it. But then there were other times where they, you know, either for budgetary reasons, I don't know, or, you know, they just didn't think they could really pull it off all that well. They, it wasn't as detailed, but they kept it darker. So, or, or the shots of it were more brief. So it's kind of like you couldn't sit there and like really get a great look at it, but you got the idea of what was going on and it was effective. So I really like the way they employed their CGI. I think they did a really good job with that. And they actually had some really creepy and scary things that they did with the CGI that I felt were pretty accomplished, especially for an independent film. So good job. Uh, so it, it does have its own twist on this whole kind of like religion demon thing. But then I feel like it goes right back to typical things that are in these types of movies. So like it starts off kind of original doing its own thing then we kind of get into like the ghost hunting the demonic stuff and then i'm like oh my god this is so well tread i'm kind of tired of this stuff and then they kind of throw in a little portion of the story where they're like but here's our take on it and i was like okay this is getting interesting i'm i'm interested to see where this goes and it stays interesting for a little bit and then i felt like for me it just started then just reverting right back to everything you've already seen in these types of films and i was just like ah oh, man originality's gone so there's some origin originality in it for a bit, but then it just kind of, I don't know. For me, it just peters out. Uh, and also I felt like it went on a little bit too long, especially at the end portion. Um, for people who are a big fan of this subgenre of horror, they may appreciate that because it's, um, for some people I could see why one scene that's very drawn out towards the end would be very effective being much longer. So you just have to watch it for yourself if you're into this subgenre in particular. Because uh, for this subgenre, I think they did a pretty solid job. I can really see people really enjoying this film. Uh, I really like the set design in this and the locations they chose for filming. I think they did a particularly good job there. And um, yeah, it just really helped with atmosphere for the film, making it feel more immersive and creepier, scarier, more intense. So good job on that uh one of the things that kind of bothers me from time to time it's fine a little bit in film but the camera work was just really really shaky in this movie and that gets to me over time it was pretty consistently shaky it's just like please just use a tripod like i understand it when it's like shots where like you have to move with people because how else are you really going to do it so like if you're moving down a hallway or something like that or people are running i understand that's kind of what you have to do but in areas where it's like people are just like standing talking, use a tripod, please. It really, really helps, and it kind of breaks it up from all that shakiness. Maybe that doesn't affect other people as much as it affects me, but at times it can make me a little bit nauseous, to be honest. Uh, the worst of which are these found footage films, especially like Cloverfield is the worst by far for me. I got nauseous numerous times during that film. Uh, almost got a really bad headache, too. Um, and, yeah. I guess that's actually it for, for me covering this film. Overall, for me personally, like I said, I'd like I'm the big disclaimer on this because of the way I feel about this subgenre and the topics in it, um, because of my personal rating of my five stars with half stars in play, I want to give it two stars, to be honest. But because of my disclaimer, because I know that I'm a little bit biased, I'm going to give it two and a half which puts me firmly in the middle, so I don't really know which way I should go with it. Was it quite, was it well done, or was it a little bit under? At the least, sorry, at, at the least I think it's kind of solid. I think they did a decent job with some things. I already laid all that out. And Tobin Bell is really good in this, and, and I really like seeing him in it. Um, yeah, I, I've met the guy before. I, I know this is just kind of like, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but... I go to horror conventions a lot, and I ended up meeting Tobin Bell at one point. And he's a very nice guy. I know a lot of people in horror are very, very nice people, and he's no exception. He's a really nice guy, and it's good to see that he's still working because uh, he's awesome. So, um, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for checking this out. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Have you seen Bells of Booth? I'm calling it Bells of Booth. I don't know. 
Uh, have you seen the movie? Uh, put some comments down there. Have you not seen it? Are you going to see it? What are your thoughts? Uh, and if you really could help me out, hit that subscribe. That is what really keeps me going with this and hoping to get this a lot bigger, get my reviews in front of more people because I'm putting a lot of effort and work into this. It is fun for me, but I'm also throwing it out there to help people out. So anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.